It's easy to make a bulky power bank with a fake capacity. You can find a lot of tutorials online, but what they don't tell you is that it barely fits in any bag and it takes a few days to fully charge it. So let's build a better one. Hello guys, my name is Sorin and today I'm going to show you how I've made my power bank, which you can see it's very small for its capacity of 15 amps hour and it can be charged three times faster than regular power banks. These are all the components you need. They came from banggood.com. You can find the international purchase links in the video description. The problem is to fit all of them in this plastic case, which can barely take just the batteries. So I need to improvise and remove all these plastic joints from the case. Remember to always wear protective goggles when working with power tools, big or small. To arrange the cells in the only possible configuration, we also need to remove two of the four screws mounting points. I need some good lithium ion cells for this project. In a previous episode I showed you how to salvage and test 18650 cells. These Panasonic ones are very good. According to their datasheet, the cells had a capacity of 2.9 amps hour when they were new. I checked their real capacity now and it's a little over 2.5 amps hour. For salvage cells, this is pretty good. I don't have a spot welding machine, so I will go with a popular way and solder the cells. If you do it very fast with a powerful soldering gun and a lot of flux or rosin, there shouldn't be any permanent damage. But keep in mind that it's very dangerous to work with lithium ion cells. They can vent toxic gases and even catch fire if you don't handle them properly. Do not overcharge them, over discharge, short circuit or heat them up. I will use 6 cells and group them in 3 pairs with similar capacity. Each pair will be insulated with electrical tape to prevent any short circuit. The wires must be soldered to the cells as fast as possible. I forgot to leave a piece of insulation on the wire between the positive terminals. Even though there is a paper insulation around the battery terminal, I will still add a piece of electrical tape. And we also need to insulate the battery terminals. I will solder a fuse to the positive wire of each pair of cells. These are 1.5 amps fuses, but because they are rated for 250 volts AC, the fuses will resist to a current a bit higher when connected to 3.7 volts DC. Then I will cover them with shrinking tubes. You can use an USB port from a lot of electronic components, even an USB extension cable. I will use one from this old serial ATA adapter. After I mark the plastic cover, I'll use a Dremel to make the hole. For monitoring the battery level, I have two options. I will connect both of them to a lithium ion cell and compare the precision while the cell is discharging. You can see the LEDs going out one by one when the battery voltage is decreasing. The battery shaped indicator seems to be more precise. I need to cut a rectangular hole for the battery indicator. I will use super glue gel to fix it in position. For turning on the power bank, I will use a toggle switch with 4 poles and 2 positions. All these wires are necessary because in one position the power bank is turned on, so all the cells are connected in parallel. In the other position the supply current will reach the charging modules and the pairs of cells can be charged individually. It's a bit difficult to place the switch in this position, but if I attach it in the regular way, on the side of the case with a nut, it will stick out from the case too much. There is very little space available, so I will glue the wires to the plastic case and insulate them with electrical tape. I will stick the lithium ion cells in position with hot glue. The TP4056 charging modules will get a bit hot while charging with 1 amp. So to protect the battery, I will glue them with double-sided foam tape, which will also act as a thermal insulator. Instead of using one charging module for all 6 cells, I will use 3 charging modules, one for each pair of cells. In the end, all 6 cells will be charged with 3 amps, so the charging time will be 3 times shorter. 
Each pair of cells will have its own set of protection features, like fuses and over-discharge protection. This is the schematic for my power bank. For more information about the components, you can check the links in the video description. So the three pairs of cells will be charged individually, but when you switch on the power bank, all six cells will be connected in parallel. There may be a problem here if the cells don't have the same voltage. If there is a big voltage difference between two cells and you connect them in parallel, there will be a big current going from one cell to the other. This will heat up and damage both cells. To prevent this, I will use these 10 ohms resistors connected between the cell's positive terminals. Let's test this theory. Here we have a discharged cell in the middle and two fully charged cells to the left and right. I will connect 5 ohm resistors between the positive terminals. The negative terminal is common to all the cells. Now the middle cell is getting charged with a small amount of current through the resistors. And you can see the voltage slowly decreasing for the other two cells. After a few hours, all the cells have almost the same voltage, so they can be safely connected in parallel. But this is an extreme situation. In my power bank there will never be such a big voltage difference between cells, because the resistors will not allow it. You can say that these cells are getting balanced in the passive way, even though this term is usually used for series connections, not parallel. For my power bank I will use resistors with the value of 10 ohms instead of 5 so the balancing current will be even smaller and safer. To increase the voltage to a stable 5 volts needed by all USB devices, I will use this step-up converter. The IC will get a bit hot when it delivers more than 1 amp, so this self-adhesive heatsink will help to cool it down. The circuit board will also be insulated with foam tape. There is only one remaining place where the module can be mounted, so I soldered the wires and insert it in position. To better fit the micro USB breakout, I will cut the circuit board corners. The output USB port will receive the negative wire from the micro USB breakout. In fact, all modules share the common negative wire, even the lithium cells until their negative terminal is disconnected from the circuit by the over discharge protection. The USB ports will be fixed to the case with hot glue. For the battery level indicator, I will use two flexible breadboard wires. I will make three holes exactly above the charging module's LEDs. Then I will fill them with transparent hot glue. In the end, they will look like LEDs mounted in the plastic case and will light up red or blue when the cells are charging or fully charged. The last thing is to adjust the output voltage to slightly above 5 volts. Now I can use only two screws to close it, but you can see that there is no problem. Nowadays most phones need a charging current between 1 and 1.7 amps, so let's test it. The voltage is still above 5 volts, so it's perfect. If I try to increase the current consumption to 2 amps, the voltage is dropping too much, but in my opinion a constant 1.7 amps at 5 volts is good enough. I will compare my homemade power bank with this new one which has a capacity of 10 amps hour and apparently an output current of 2 amps. But in reality the voltage is decreasing too much even at 700 milliamps. And at 1.7 amps the voltage drops to 4.7 volts which is very inefficient. You can see the power bank is fully charged, this is not a fake test. Let's test the charging current of the new 10 amps hour power bank. In average is 700 milliamps. It takes 11 hours and 20 minutes to fully charge it. Now let's test the charging current of my homemade power bank. You can see the over discharge protection turns it off because the cells are fully discharged to 2.5 volts. The charging process starts with 300 milliamps. What's going on? Well, if we look at the TP4056 datasheet, we notice that the initial charging current is only 100 milliamps until the battery voltage increases from 2.5 volts to 3 volts. Then the charging current jumps to 1 amp. After a minute, the current for each pair of cells is increasing to 1 amp. 
In a few hours, the current is starting to decrease exactly as specified in the datasheet. And after 6 hours and 50 minutes, the battery is fully charged. In the last minute, the LEDs are turning blue one by one, and the current decreases towards zero. Now all the cells are balanced in an active way to 4.2 volts. Let's compare the weight. Obviously, the DIY version is heavier, because it's using 6 cells instead of 5, and good quality cells are usually heavier. The DIY power bank is bigger, but it does have 50% more capacity and a higher output current, so that's understandable. But it's nowhere near the fake 50 amps hour batteries that you find online. In my opinion, 15,000 milliamps hour are enough for a power bank. It can charge my phone four times, and now I can carry it very easily. But keep in mind, most power banks have the capacity measured at the nominal 3.7 volts. So when you increase the voltage to 5 volts, the real capacity will decrease. I really enjoyed making this power bank and you can see in this comparison table that it's very efficient. If you also enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.